It's fall. Fall is in the air, cooling off, and we got three of our favorite fall dishes for you. What are they? Whoo, a cheesy tater soup, buckaroo cabbage soup, and hodgepodge beef soup. You better stick around because you're going to lick the bowl on every one of them. So we welcome y'all to camp, we do. And as you can tell, it looks a little different. It does up here. We are in the Ozarks, Silver Dollar City, Branson, Missouri. We're always up here in the month of October during the fall festival. We've been doing lots of cooking demonstrations, feeding 20,000 people as they come by. It's hard. And what are we gonna break out? Some of our favorite soups. Now I love them all, I do. And today we're gonna show you our old classic favorite that my mother used to fix us for so many years. And that is a cheesy potato soup. It'll warm you up on them cold days. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna venture to Elko, Nevada with my little taste buds where I found Shan, and we're gonna have us some buckaroo cabbage soup. And then we're gonna finish it up with a hearty dish that I have served so many cowboys on them old long cold days. They've been in a saddle, and that is a beef hodgepodge soup. Whew. And just like it says hodgepodge, we gonna put a little everything in it. So y'all are in for a treat. Shan will have the recipe right there below and you can click on a link that will give you a printable version of that recipe from our website on the blog. I done got me about six of them russet potatoes. Pretty good in size. Took that tater peeler and peeled them all off there. And then we're gonna slice them pretty evenly both ways there. And then we're gonna cut them into pretty good bite sized chunks. Cause I like a bite of tater when I reach in there put them in that pot, just barely cover them with water. We're gonna take us a yellow onion, medium in size, and then just take him over and dice him right in there with that. So we're gonna bring all that to a bowl to where when you pull them taters out of there and they are nearly fork tender, shut her off, drain the water, and let's start back with the goodness. So when you get to boiling this, don't think you can take a nap. You're gonna to have to stir it once or twice. And remember, I don't want these things to boil down like we're making mashed potatoes. You want them a little firmer than that, so be careful and don't cook them too long. We have started with, what? Five cups of milk today. Now I've done this different ways. You can use a quarter of that heavy cream and then put you a cup of milk in there, or you can use half and half, however rich your taste buds seem to be. But today, I got five cup of milk I'm gonna pour in there. I like to take one stick of butter. I'm just gonna chunk it in here, about like so. Give it a little stir. And we'll let that go to love until that butter goes to melting. We have brought it back to a bowl we have. I am gonna go ahead and season right quick with our original. And you know, one thing I've learned up here in Ozarks is everything gets a little humid and it's hard to shake, I'll promise you. And you can season to your suiting. I'm gonna add a little more black pepper cause I do like it with some black pepper. And I'm using a coarse ground today so it'll show up. A Little bit of garlic powder. I want it just sorta of on a simmer as we start back. And remember when you're stirring, get all the way around the sides, everywhere on the bottom so don't nothing stick. What comes next, the magical ingredient? Cheese, Velveeta cheese. Well, we're gonna use half, which is eight ounces. Just go to chunking her in there, folks. Cube her up in little pieces where it'll melt a little quicker. You know, folks, what needs to happen? The rest of this cheese needs to join in there with everybody else. Woo, more cheese. You cannot have too much cheese, so Let's get him in there and get him melted, get everybody incorporated well. We have got a whole whopping pound of cheese. You know, folks, out there on ranches, we use a whole lot of that Velveeta cheese because I don't have to have a whole lot of refrigeration going out there on times. And I really do love the flavor that it brings to it. It's got that creamy goodness cheese to it. So things is beginning to thicken up here a little. And if you let this just sit just a second before you serve it, it'll even congeal a little more. The cheese has melted. It is time to enjoy the fruits. Hang on, somebody heard we were making soup. Sorry for the interruption, folks, but when you throw food off in the here on the table, people all the time are gonna be showing up trying to eat it, but I'm gonna get the first bowl today. Mm -mm. See that good rich color that this has got? That Velveeta adds so much to this. 
Mm. Oh my. Wow! I'm like James Brown, that makes me feel good, folks. This here is some good eating. This is one of them meals that's gonna warm you up on a cold day. It is comfort food at its best. Cabbage soup, take it away. All right, folks. Woo! The cheesy tater soup was good, but folks, this has fast become one of my favorites, buckaroo cabbage soup. Now, I started out with seven cups of water, a box of that vegetable broth. Now, we've used chicken broth in this, but me and Shan both got the feeling that the vegetable broth even gives it a more richy, richy, that ain't a word. A richy flavor. <laughs> gives it a more rich and hearty taste. So, we got that in there. Ham hock goes in next, then we're gonna core that cabbage out, take that old big hash knife, and sort of slice it up in pretty good bite-sized pieces. Chunk it all in there. What comes next after that? Four of Bugs Bunny's favorite meal. What was they? Carrots. And I ain't got no tater peeler, and if you ain't got one, you can always use the cowboy style, which is the back side of that knife. And just go ahead and let her go. Done. It is time to slice and dice and I like mine in about bite-sized pieces. So folks, we're gonna bring it to a boil for about 10 minutes, we are. I'm well, it has boiled for about 10 minutes, it has, folks. I have turned it down to a simmer now. So what comes next? We have got us two garlic cloves that we minced up here. We're gonna chunk them in there. I'm gonna rough chop this onion and stick it in there. Next, we're gonna have us about a tablespoon of fresh thyme. It's some of them Herbies that Shan got me on to. Now, I had never been used to a lot of weeds in my life that you eat, but this here's a good one and it gives great flavor. I always like to take them where the stem is down the root part and just peel them leaves off there and we're gonna stack them right over here. They call it thyme, cause folks, this be taking some time off of my schedule. I could have. If a man had like a little goat, he could probably chew this up for you pretty fast, but right in there it goes. We're going to give it a good stir. Then we're going to season with a tablespoon of smoked paprika. A little salt and pepper to your taste. Or you can use our Red River Ranch original. That's what I'm going to put in there. And we're going to cook it until them carrots get good and tender, which is probably gonna take how long, Shan? About 40 minutes. Probably about 40 minutes to get them carrots tender. We're gonna cover it cause it's gonna get there quicker. Folks, as you're cooking this along, and if you think it's getting a tad thirsty in there, add you a little more water, or if you've got some more of that broth handy, I'd pour it in there. And that's hot, don't take long to look at that. Oh my gosh. That stuff would be smelling really good. My mother used to cook a lot of cabbage and it would run me out of the kitchen. Her and my dad, they loved some of that cabbage and I just couldn't hardly stand the smell of it. And when Shen started making this, I'm thinking, it's another one of them days I'm probably gonna have to leave the kitchen. But folks, when you get all this put together, there is an aroma that fills the house that will warm your heart. So let's get us some of this down in there, get some of that broth. I just can't get over how good the smell is. That thyme is probably one of my more favorite herbies to ever use. Mm. <clears throat> Let's go. The fresh cabbage out of there, out of that garden, and them little carrots and that onion. You know, if we had us a good old loaf of that sourdough bread smeared with about a half a pound of butter on there or some French bread, you wouldn't need nothing else. You'd be good to go. Is if you're going to store this and refrigerate it later, take that ham hock out of there and discard him. But if you want to do something even better than that, take that meat out of there and feed your pup because he'd love to have it. Do you sense that, folks? Fall is in the air.
is the grand finale. What is it? Hodgepodge. Been an old classic at our house for many years, and I have fixed it for many a hungry cowboy on an old cold evening when they come in. This thing will warm your heart and your soul, but it'll also work on a Sunday social dinner. Don't be afraid to take this one out and show it. I started with a pound of ground beef, I did. Let it get nearly halfway done. One onion, diced her up, slipped her right in there, seasoned it really well with our original seasoning, and then we just let it brown all the way, and then we're gonna add the rest of the goodness to it. That is two cans of this here minestrone soup. It does pair well with this dish, I'll promise you. Can and a half of water, so don't be throwing your cans away, folks. So let's get that in there. And that is a can of Rotel. They have hot, medium, and mild. I prefer the hot, but today I'm being easy with you and we got the original. Y'all have seen us use it many times in our hominy and green chili casserole, but it does work really well in this little dish right here. Ranch style beans. These are pretty prominent down here in this part of the country, but some of you folks up north wrote us when the cookbook come out and said y'all couldn't find them. Use you any good chili bean. It will work just as well. So let's get them in there, give it a good stir, and we'll be ready to go. We're going to bring this to a bowl for about 10 minutes hard, turn it down, and we're going to let it simmer about 30 to 45 minutes. And then what we're going to do, we're going to eat it. I like to get in here. Look at all that goodness in there. Woo-wee, as Justin Wilson would say, I guarantee that they're going to be good. Get me a little of that broth. And I'll give you a little tip, folks, right now for sure. If there's any leftovers, every time you warm this up, it will get better. Mm. Whoa, hats off. Wow. That is the grand finale, and this is probably one of my favorite dishes of all time. And I know some of you are going to be saying, because I hear it, he just poured stuff out of a can in there. If you know how to mix it, you can make that canned stuff taste as good as anything in the world. So this is a one-pot meal that is very easy that you can fix in no time. Well, folks, we have got you covered for winter time. Forget chopping wood. You won't need none of that to got warm because you got all three of these right here, folks. And that hodgepodge recipe can be found in our book. What is it? A Taste of Cowboy. You say you ain't got one. What's the deal? Go to KentRollins.com. You can get you one. We thank y'all for stopping by camp. It has been a great day today to share three of our favorites with y'all. Share the video and the food with your neighbors because the world needs more good neighbors. Remember old glory still flying high above this wagon again today and we tip our hat to all the service men and women that have ever served this country and kept it free and safe. I'd like to thank my little wife for all the good filming she does. Pan over Shan to camp security. You can see he's hard at it. Aren't you big? You are hard at it. Don't forget to hit the little subscribe button God bless you each and every one, and we'll see you down the Three Soup Trail. Hey, we've had some really big celebrations going the last couple of weeks. Anna and Steve are celebrating 10 year anniversary. Let's give them a hoo wee Good job. And we got a couple of happy birthday wishes. Zoe, who is turning nine, and Tinsley and Tinsley, who is turning eight. So happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to y'all.